Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of a thriller drama films from 2019, titled Angel of Mine. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film opens with Lizzie, a grieving woman on the verge of divorce, because her declining mental health has created a rift between her and her husband, Mike. She has a son named Tommy, and used to have a daughter, but the little girl died, and Lizzie is still trying to cope with her grief till this day. One day, she accompanies her son Tommy to his friend, Jeremy's birthday party. Here she sees a little girl named Lola, who reminds her of her late daughter, so much so that she decides to follow her. At the same party, she also gets introduced to the girl's mother, Claire. It seems that Lizzie couldn't get the little girl off her mind, because after the party, she asks her son about Lola, to which he says it's Jeremy's little sister. It is after the mother and son get home that we witness how broken Lizzie really is over her daughter's death. She relies on medication and would cry every night over it. In fact, she misses her daughter so much that she goes and stalks Lola the next day, by watching her after school and snapping pictures in secret. Claire shows up to pick Lola up, and the two begin driving away, prompting Lizzie to follow the car until they get home. That night, she has dinner with Tommy and her parents, during which she announces that she has a date. But being the creep that she is, she instead goes to Claire's house later that evening, and sneaks through the gate. As she enters the property, she sneaks past Lola's father and Jeremy. The woman watches as little Lola dances around the pool, until the little girl spots her and falls into the water in shock. Lizzie panics and goes to rescue her, but the little girl starts freaking out. Luckily, the entire scene was simply Lizzie's shower thoughts, and never actually happened. The following day, Tommy seems annoyed when her mother asks him to celebrate the birthday of her late daughter, who died seven years ago. Around the same time, Lizzie discovers that Claire is putting her house up for sale, and an idea springs to mind. She comes over to Claire's and pretends to be interested in checking out the house, so the two schedule a house tour. Here we learn that Claire doesn't even remember Lizzie's name, which shows that they just met at Jeremy's birthday party. Plus, Claire's family are moving to Perth. That evening, Lizzie actually goes on a date with a gentleman and even goes home with him. However, things turn awkward because she realizes that she's too mentally unstable to start a connection with someone, so she leaves. The next morning, she shows up for Claire's house tour, and keeps stealing glances at Lola, who is out swimming. During the tour, she tells Claire that she works as a successful manager for a company, impressing Claire. Not long after when Claire shows her around upstairs, Lizzie stares at a picture of Lola for far too long, and asks here and there about how Lola feels about the family moving. According to Claire, Lola couldn't be more excited about the move. When Claire's husband comes home, they all gather downstairs to greet him, including Lola. This is the first time that Lizzie talks to the child. After seeing Lola head upstairs, Lizzie excuses herself to the bathroom, but goes to see Lola instead. She starts brushing her hair, then looks in the mirror and creepily says they look alike. Of course, Lola is completely oblivious to how weird this whole thing is. Sometime after, Lizzie returns downstairs and says that she will consider buying the house. They also schedule another playdate for Tommy and Jeremy per the two boys' requests, and thus, Lizzie is going to take them ice skating soon. When they come over to Lizzie's parents' house after, Lizzie reveals that she has no actual interest in buying a new house, upsetting Tommy because he feels betrayed. He claims that he feels sick living in Lizzie's cramped apartment because it's depressing to hear her cry every night, and her mental health is such a mess that she hasn't been a good mother. Tommy then expresses that he wants to live with his dad instead, breaking Lizzie's heart. Seeing Lizzie cry, her parents give her an intervention, and says that Tommy is perhaps better off living with his dad. This causes Lizzie to spiral, but she eventually calms down and takes the advice. The next scene takes us to Lizzie's place of work, which reveals to us that she is not a successful manager after all, she is simply an employee at a makeup studio. Here she asks her superior to give her a day off, claiming that her son has fallen ill. But after the shop lets her off for the day, she actually goes to the ice skating rink, where she watches the children ice skate alongside Claire. When Claire gets distracted by a phone call, she takes the opportunity to jump inside the rink to teach Lola how to skate. It doesn't take long for her to hold Lola, and put their faces close together. Even creepier, she begins moving to kiss Lola, right when a random skater crashes into them, 
causing Lola to fall and hit her head against the rink barrier. Claire freaks out and moves to rescue her daughter. She clearly blames Lizzie for this because Lizzie's moving too fast, and acts cold towards her as they pack up to leave the rink. Lizzie attempts to make things up by offering to babysit Lola and Jeremy, so that Claire and her husband could go on date night, but Claire isn't too keen on the idea. Once back home, Lizzie beats herself up for ruining her chances of ever seeing Lola again. Overtaken by rage, she takes her medication and flushes the pills down the toilet. During a session with her therapist, Lizzie blatantly lies about how things have been going, she claims that her relationship with her son is great. She's moving on from her dead daughter, and she has been taking her pills regularly. But despite Lizzie's efforts, it seems that the therapist could see through her lies. A few days later, Claire is sitting with her daughter when she witnesses something off. She sees Lizzie standing in front of her house, but when she heads out to talk to her, Lizzie is gone. Another creepy encounter happens during Lola's ballet recital. Lizzie appears out of nowhere, just moments before Lola goes on stage to wish her luck. Throughout the performance, Claire who is in the audience notices how Lola keeps looking to the side of the stage, while Lizzie keeps smiling to see her. Despite the good performance, Claire starts to feel like something's off. After the performance, Lizzie bumps into Claire's husband, and he coolly invites her to their going away party. But when Claire sees her there, she appears confused as to why Lizzie would be watching this recital, especially after Lizzie admits that she doesn't know anyone performing aside from Lola. To make it even weirder, little Lola obliviously mentions that she kept glancing at Lizzie when she was performing, making Claire realize that Lizzie was backstage the whole time. As this is beyond weird, Claire tracks down Lizzie's place of work to confront her. They sit at a coffee shop, and it is at this point that Lizzie finally admits everything. She says she never intended to buy the house, because of course she could never afford it. Moreover, her reason for approaching Claire was because she's convinced Lola is her daughter. Here she reveals that she lost her daughter in a hospital fire seven years ago, and there might be some confusion amid all the panic, therefore Lola might actually be hers and not Claire's. Of course, Claire thinks she's insane and needs psychiatric help. Not only that, Claire tells her to stay away from her family before leaving. The next thing she does is propose to her husband that they should call the police on Lizzie. The husband however, doesn't think there's anything to worry about, because Lizzie hasn't broken any actual laws. Meanwhile, Lizzie gets fired from her job for abandoning her shift. Her salty manager sends her off with an insult, saying that she hopes Lizzie is a better parent than she is an employee. This angers Lizzie, so she grips the woman's wrist really hard, before she snaps out of it and leaves the room. Despite it all, Lizzie still isn't done, she finds Lola at a kid's birthday party, and takes her on a boat ride. Not long after, Claire calls the homeowner to check up on her daughter, and gets casually informed that Lola just went for a walk with one of Claire's friends. Hearing Lizzie's name causes her to panic, and she heads to the scene straight away. On the boat ride, Lizzie admits to Lola that she lost her daughter, and asks if Lola remembers her, which the little girl says no to. Later on when Claire gets to the party, she finds Lola back and unharmed, so she takes a sigh of relief. Claire then asks what they were talking about on the boat, to which the little girl replies babies. At the same time, Lizzie has just got back home to find her entire family and her therapist in the living room. Apparently, she never picked Tommy up from soccer practice, so the school called Mike the ex-husband to pick him up. Seeing this negligence, he finally decides to take Tommy to live with him, causing Lizzie to get defensive, stating that her mental health has been improving and she has a stable job. But this attempt to lie doesn't go over well, because her parents received messages from Lizzie's boss stating that Lizzie has been fired. The boss tried to reach Lizzie but she wasn't picking up her phone, so she reached Lizzie's parents instead. The therapist then adds that he thinks Lizzie should be admitted to a mental hospital. Cornered, Lizzie admits that she has been occupied with a recent discovery, Lola. There's a very strong likelihood, and she believes Lola to be her long-lost daughter. Mike tries to hit her with reality by repeatedly telling her that their daughter is dead, and that he cremated the body himself, but she's convinced that they cremated the wrong baby and Lola is her daughter. Even her parents don't believe her, making her feel betrayed and leave. That night, she goes on her laptop to do a research on the hospital fire from seven years ago, and tries inquiring Lola's health records. Unfortunately, she fails to obtain it because medical professionals aren't allowed to share patient records with anyone outside of family. 
Another thing she got was a voice note from a furious Claire, stating that she found out about Lizzie taking Lola on a boat, and threatening to involve the police if Lizzie ever comes near her family again. After her research turns up empty-handed, Lizzie comes up with another idea. She attends Claire's going away party with a previous invitation from Claire's husband, and tries sneaking upstairs. However, Claire's friend stops her, assuming that Lizzie is looking for the bathroom, and points her to the right direction. But to her surprise, Claire is waiting for her when she opens the door. She escorts her out while Lizzie proposes that they should get a DNA test to prove Lola's identity. Claire is not having it and tells her to get off the property before she calls the police. But Lizzie doesn't just leave, she waits inside her car until the party's over. While the couple is cleaning up, she sneaks back inside to cut a strand of Lola's hair, but the little girl isn't in the room. Downstairs, Claire is setting up their home alarm system, making it impossible for Lizzie to head out without activating the alarm. When Claire hears something, she heads upstairs to check the room, but doesn't find anyone as Lizzie is hiding in the closet. In fact, Lizzie learns that Lola's not even home because she's being babysat by Claire's friend for the night. With no other choice, she stays there until the next morning. As she wakes up, she goes right ahead to look for any strand of hair around Lola's room. Up next, she heads downstairs to exit the house, but again, she gets caught by Claire. Lizzie lunges at the woman, but Claire throws her against a painting on the wall, breaking the glass. As Lizzie attempts to escape Claire's grip, they end up scuffling on the floor, atop of shards of glass. At last, Claire picks up a pair of scissors, and presses it against her throat while threatening her one more time to get out of her life. But Lizzie has nothing left to lose now, she's lost her daughter, her husband, her son is getting taken away, and she has no job either. So she claims that it's okay for Claire to kill her because otherwise, she's never going to stop coming after Lola. Lizzie swears to her that she will get her DNA evidence and prove that Lola is hers. Seeing how determined and serious Lizzie is, Claire can't hold the ugly secret any longer, and breaks down in tears. At this point, she finally admits that she was in the hospital fire and she lost her baby that day. She then found a stranded baby girl, and she claims that she saved her and took her home. This means that Lizzie hasn't been so crazy after all, and being called crazy for seven years was not fair. It is now that Claire begs for Lizzie to not take Lola away, and to not tell her husband, because he doesn't know that Lola isn't his. And then just in time, the husband arrives home from picking up the kids. Worst of it all, he heard everything. He looks at Claire in betrayal and leaves the house. Afterwards, Lizzie informs her ex-husband Mike about this discovery, and comes to his place of work. The ex-husband immediately apologizes for doubting her and the two embrace. We learn that Claire has to stand trial for child theft, while Lola gets introduced for the first time to her biological family over lunch. Mike seems so overwhelmed to see his long-lost daughter, since Lizzie wasn't the only one who suffered from the loss before. The movie ends with an upset Lizzie, and a guilt-ridden Claire staring at each other. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Angel of Mine 2019. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.